Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call our town council meeting for it's our regular town council meeting for July the 8th, 2024. Um, to order, it is 7 p.m. at our town hall complex in Batesburg, Leesville. Uh, at this time, I would invite Pastor Kent Suits to come and lead us in an invocation, please. Let's pray. Father God, you are good and mighty. You rule and you reign over all things and all people. We thank you for these men and women who serve this community, this town. Lord, we pray for them tonight as they discuss things concerning the town that they have been called to serve. That they would have the best interests, uh, the interest of the people that they have been uh, put into this seat. And you who have ultimately put them into the place where they serve as leaders of this community. Lord, that they would exercise their position with wisdom, with gentleness, and with kindness, and with love for all who are impacted by what they have been called to. And we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Sheets. Um, stand for the pledge if you are able, led by Mrs. Brown. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda. We have a motion to approve. So moved. Mr. Balk Knight, do you have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hall. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. Four? Yes. Five? Yes. Six? Yes. Eight? Yes. And mayor votes yes. Uh, motion carries. Adoption of the minutes for the regular council meeting. This was on June the 10th, 2024. Do have a motion to adopt those minutes as presented in your packet? So moved. Mr. Hall, do have a second? Second, second by Mr. Balknight. Any discussion? District one? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? District three votes yes. Four? Yes. Five? Yes. Six? Yes. Eight? Yes. And Mayor votes yes. And, uh, motion carries. Item B, uh, special council meeting June 28th, 2024. Uh, those meetings as presented, uh, those minutes as presented in our packet. Uh, do have a motion to adopt? So moved. I'm going to go first on Mr. Park tonight and uh, second on Mr. Hall. Um, any discussion? Uh, District 1? District 2? Yes. 3? District 3 votes yes. 4? Yes. 5? I'm looking at you. Thank you. 6? Yes. 8? Yes. And Mayor votes yes. Motion carries. Uh, for my report this evening, the next regular council meeting will be August the 12th, 2024. Um, Central Midlands Council Member Bach Knight. I don't have any report. Thank you. Hey, sir. He, uh, member Prowse, Council Member Prowse is uh, not here this evening. Uh, Common Advisory Committee, Council Member Kane. I'm, I'm going to report this month, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Um, and for joint municipal report, just a few items. Um, uh, Swansea's operation agreement um, between uh, Joint Municipal and the Town of Swansea has been signed. It goes into effect on July 10th. Um, Joint Municipal looks forward to assisting the town in a more official capacity over the next 18 months and kind of help them through a, a period that they're dealing with. Our you know, water project continues to progress uh, with progress with installation of a water main on the BL side and the tank construction uh, has begun. Uh, City of West Columbia water plant expansion continues and Joint Municipal will, will be meeting with uh, West Columbia staff in a couple of weeks to get an update on that. And the Bluefield pump station is nearing completion and will be ready for the new elementary school that is close to that area um, this month as well. For the chamber meeting, or the chamber update, uh, Mr. Mike was uh, not available this evening. His son was playing, uh, his son is um, playing baseball tonight. So we have several teams on championship uh, games this evening. So. Hands over. 
So, uh, so I do have a report from Mr. Mike. And he said, to my uh, knowledge, it's the first time that each of the Batesburg Louisville's Dixie Youth baseball teams have made it to the state playoffs. So all of them. Um, so uh, we're representing the South Carolina District Three, Division Two. Uh, the rookie ball team, uh, six years and under, played last week in the state championship game. And after losing to Lancaster, this team finished as state runner-up. Um, and our A, uh, the late coaches pitch, eight years and under. Uh, the AAA minors, uh, 10 years and under. And Ozone, 12 years and under, begin play Saturday, July the 6th, and are still active in playoffs. I'm not sure how all those have turned out, but uh, congratulations to all those teams. Mr. Mike said that a business after hours for June was held at the Oak Street Hatchet uh, on Tuesday, June 25th. And this event continues to grow, allows business owners an opportunity to meet other owners and enjoy networking if they are unable to attend the general membership meeting. Jennifer Hathcock, the new director of manufacturing at the Hitachi plant, and several other key employees were present at the after hours event. Um, during the general membership meeting on Thursday, June 27th, uh, the chamber received reports from the town, the school district, and the county. And Richard Ta Taylor gave a presentation on conditions and ownership of the vacant buildings in the Batesburg Business District. Uh, Mr. Mike has a meeting scheduled on Wednesday, July 10th with Dr. Damara Hightower Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell is the founder and CEO of the Center of Excellence for Educator Preparation and uh, Innovation of Voorhees University. The meeting was scheduled to share information and to become more knowledgeable concerning the planned opportunities Voorhees has for the Midland Tech, uh, Midlands Tech College facilities located on uh, 423 College Street. And the 36th, chamber, 36th Annual Chamber Auction will be held at TNS Farm on Saturday, August the 17th, so mark your calendars. And that is the report from Mr. Mike. Um, Ms. Judy, do I have any any items? Nothing for okay, nothing for the public comment. We have no unfinished business this evening, so we'll move to new business. Uh, item A. This is a first reading for an ordinance to rezone proper property located at 532 West Columbia Avenue. And <clears throat> sorry. Uh, this is going to be from C1 General Commercial to C2 Office and Institutional Commercial, consisting of 0.584 acres. Uh, Lexington County TMS number is 7027-07-001. Do I have a motion to adopt first reading for this ordinance? So moved. I have a uh, first by Mr. Balknight. Do you have a second? Second. By Mr. Wise. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. Mr. Kane? <coughs> so, uh, Jay. Yes. It, at some point, we really need to look at having the Planning Commission meet with council so that we can discuss how we can do, uh, redo the zoning uh, for the entire town versus uh, spot zoning every month, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Any other discussion? Yes. Ms. Hartley? Yes, and also, Ms. Hendricks, we would like to think that those people on the zoning committee they might need to know, as well as some others, where the tunnel is projecting to go in the next five, 10 years. So then that would help with the zoning decisions, as Mr. King was saying, when we would come together and then the two entities would come together and meet and discuss in a joint effort where we're going and we'd know what to expect and what to do in those times, King. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hartley. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hall. Uh, if I may, was this area, this uh, particular piece of property, previously used as a daycare? Yes. Is the owner here? Yes. My understanding is that it was, but I'm not sure was that was for variance? certain. Was that with a variance, or was that uh, outside of zoning? My understanding, Councilman Hall, from uh, Ms. Saeed, was that it had been rezoned to C1, and this rezoning would take it back to what it had previously been zoned. So we, we're playing ping pong with zoning. In a manner of speaking. As a request from the property owner. Yes. Right. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? Again, this is first reading for rezoning on 532 West Columbia Avenue from C1 to C2, District 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. District 3 votes yes. 4. Yes. 
Five? Yes. Six? Yes. Uh, eight? Yes. And Mayor votes yes. Motion carries. The second item for new business this evening is a first reading for an ordinance of rezoning properties located at 361 and 347 Highland Avenue. This is from R1 single family residential to R1A single family and to manufacture housing residential. This is consisting of 2.16 acres. Lexington County TMS number 5917-01-006 and TMS number 005920-08-007. And again, this is a request from the property owner. Um, the purpose for the two properties to be rezoned is to meet minimum of two acres as a minimum area requirement for the creation of a new zoning district. The request was approved by the Planning Commission on June 17th, 6-1. Uh, and um, any, let's see, do I have a motion to adopt first reading of this ordinance? So moved. Mr. Balknight, I'm gonna give you one, I'm gonna give you a second. Mr. Hall, is that fine? That's fine, thank you, Mr. Thank you, sir. Any discussion? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Kane? Uh, Jay, we need to look at um, getting the planning commission and the council together so that we can do a comprehensive uh, zoning map so that we don't have to uh, rezone every every other month or every month. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Ms. Mitchell. For Jay, is, is, is this property, it is in the town limit, right? Yes. Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay, so they, the, you, you have modular homes in the town limit. Yes, manufactured homes, they have to meet certain standards. But, but they, trailers are not allowed, right? It's it's kind of, the manufactured home is the, the term that is used now. They have to have all of their hardware removed. It, it has to have a foundation placed underneath it. It's got to meet certain standards that are laid out. It's always been... No, I, I don't know how long that's been the case, but it's been the case for a number, a couple of decades, I would think. But. Uh, but this is not a traditional trailer from you know what we remember when 70s, 80s, even into the 90s. Mm -hmm. This is this is the newer age of oh, a trailer. trailer, but it's, it's called manufactured housing, and it's got to meet the the building code, and then it also has to have the again the hardware removed, the, the trailer hitch, the uh, the wheels, and then it has to be a foundation to make it a permanent structure, and that and that is all inspected by. Uh, the town through Sacred Hill. So the equipment is already there, like the, the water hooked up and Yes, yeah, so this site had a uh, mobile home uh, many years ago, about 10 to 15 years ago it was removed. So it does have a, a water tap and a, a sewer tap from many years ago. That's my understanding. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hall. I, I have two questions. Uh, and I'm, um, number one, I'm a little confused about the term manufactured home. It appears in our ordinances and many variations. Um, in this particular case, I'd like to make sure that the owner's aware of it. In R1A, it has to be 20 foot wide. That's one of the few specifics we have, uh, that it has to be 20 foot wide. Um, and my other question is, since I, we do not have access to the zoning map, uh, is this uh, a donut hole zoning? Uh, I, I suppose to use that term, that is why there are two acre or two parcels being uh, combined to create that minimum of two acres because it is not contiguous with another R1A. Correct. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Any other discussion? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask a question. Harley? The two parcels of land, are they connected or is there separation with another? Uh, so in the council packet, you, you have that map. It, they are connected, they have to be contiguous. It is kind of an awkward connection but they are connected yes I saw it it is awkward. It, it's it's kind of and I, I don't know the family's here I don't know why that little shoestring is there <laughs> but uh, uh, but they are connected uh, okay. and contiguous thank you, yeah, thank you. Any, any other discussion again this is the first reading for an ordinance going from R1 single family to R1A single family manufactured housing residential district one yes two yes three district three votes yes Four? They said four, yes. Five? Yes. Six? Yes. Eight? Yes. 
and Mary Boats, yes, uh, first reading passes. For item C, this is a first reading for an ordinance to annex property located at 226 Bobcat Road, consisting of 1.9 acres, uh, Saluda County, TMS number 184-00-15. This is a request from the property owner to be annexed into the town. The property is contiguous with the town. The property would be included as R1. It would be part of Council District 8. And the request, uh, the request was approved by the Planning Commission on the June 17th meeting unanimously. Um, do I have a motion to adopt first reading of this ordinance? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Wise, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Balkman, yes. any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Kane? So, um, Jay, we probably need to get the Planning Commission together mm -hmm. with um, the Council so that we can do a comprehensive uh, zoning map so that we're not here every month doing um, zoning and, and annexation. I kind of feel like I'm on the planning commission. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Any other discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hall. I, mean, uh, I assume this is in uh, relationship to water connections and so forth. Uh, and the issue is the ownership of the road in front of this uh, residence for easement purposes is that uh, is that section Saluda County or is that the private roadway owned by Tri-County Associates uh, I can't speak to the, the road ownership you may have greater knowledge of that um, but typically roadways do not you know, dissect uh, the county it is, or the town it is contiguous with neighboring well, parcels Lexington County owns the first part of Bob, Bob, uh, Bobcat. Saluda County owns the section of Bobcat and has acknowledged that they have refused to accept it. And I'm just thinking of easements and, and a bit for the town running water lines. They typically are run along roadways and the easements are. That is true. Um, so have we looked to make sure we have, we're going to have the right to get an easement to service that department. That, I have not been made aware of a request for an extension on the, the water line, though. It has been. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Mr. Barclay? I think if we do a little checking, we're going to find that it's a water line already there paid for by those citizens out there. I know I work on the well and, and no longer have the need for that, so they have a access to city water now. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. Ms. Hartley? And on their annex, should this continue to pass it, where would they get their first responders or services from? Would it be Lexington? Um, so, so it would remain the same for fire and EMS. Uh, the fire service is already, we already have a contract with Saluda County. Saluda County is already their EMS provider. Uh, this would provide them police protection instead of Saluda County Sheriff's Department, or in addition to the Sheriff's Department. But the primary responder would be the police department. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Again, this is a first reading for an ordinance to annex property located on Bobcat Road, um, District 1. Yes. 2. Yes. 3. District 3 votes yes. 4. District 4, yes. 5. Yes. 6. Yes. 8. Yes. And Mayor votes yes. Motion carries. Item D in new business this evening. This is a, a resolution suspending section 9-2-8 of the town's code of ordinance for summer concerts in Leesville College Park. Uh, the re resolution would suspend section 9-2-8 of the town's code of ordinance to allow for the sale of alcohol at Leesville College Park as part of summer concerts. The concerts are scheduled, uh, so this would be on two dates. This would be for July, or three dates, I'm, I apologize. This would be for July 13th, August 10th, and September 14th. Do I have a motion to uh, accept this resolution? Is it a proclamation or a resolution? Hold on one second. It's a proclamation, correct? It's a resolution. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I believe it has to be a resolution. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've got it written two ways for me up here, so I just want to make sure. Thank you. Um, all right, do I have a motion to adopt? A 
Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt this so open it for discussion. Thank you, Mr. Balknight. Um, makes a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Wise, any discussion? Yeah. Ms. I, Mitchell? Okay, you're saying that this function, these functions in, in the park are going to have act call that they're going to sell act call on premises. So, police protection will be there? Law enforcement will be there, yes. Uh, how do they, how, I mean, what about people getting drunk and disorderly? Uh, certainly that is a possibility anytime. I know it is. Uh, the, the process would be for, uh, we've spoken with Fox of Beer and Wine, and they would have the license uh, through LLR for, for that event. They would be the ones responsible for ensuring that it's they're properly ID and they would not serve beyond, you know, somebody, or serving someone that's obviously intoxicated. How do you know that? I mean, I, you know, well, some people can be have too much to drink and they're not falling down sloppy. Well, that's true. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. So, how do you know when uh, when they've had enough? Uh, and I may defer to the chief on that. I, I don't. I never have dealt with law enforcement on how do you determine somebody that's had too much to drink. Uh, typically, it just kind of you, you see it, but. Um, you know, we did have a concert in the park last year with this same resolution in place. We didn't have any problems last year. The intent is that by providing a vendor to sell, that we would minimize or really eliminate people bringing off-site alcohol via the But you tool. know people will bring it on-site. You know, I, I, I am pragmatic enough know, to know that there are people that will bring it. You know, there are people that's going to bring their own alcohol, their beer and liquor and everything else. So, you know. Uh, you know, at that point, then it just it becomes an enforcement issue uh, with our, our police department. Um, you know, we, we did this same resolution last year uh, for the concert in the park. Uh, we did not have any problems that resulted from that. We had a, a decent crowd. It's not an all-day event. It's just a three-hour concert. So we didn't run into extended period of time where people were consuming alcohol. We didn't, we didn't see any problems last year. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hall, uh, I have a concern about liability as far as the town is concerned. Uh, do we have a agreement with Fox that, that they will relieve us of liability? Um, there's some fairly large settlements out there for people who are intoxicated and are involved in accidents or for any case, uh, being a previous owner of both the liquor store and a beer and wine uh, liability insurance and relief of liability is a big factor. So how exposed is the town for a liability if an incident occurs here? Now, so the council is saying that there would be liability with us on the park. And those settlements are usually relatively large. Usually, juries look at the towns and say they are the people with the money. So I would think that we should place this contingent upon a uh, liability, a relief of liability for what it's worth. Uh, sometimes that's ignored, but the liability issue bothers me. You know, my understanding is uh, when someone's selling it is on the, the liability would be on the seller. And they would have insurance. Um, I know that never. Uh, and, I, and I do know that, that was how it was last year. They do have their insurance and they you know, go through LLR to have the permission for that setup. I don't know exactly what that term The town is. wouldn't be selling. The town would not be selling. We have a vendor selling. The vendor okay. selling. Yeah, but the vendor Hold on, hold on selling. one second. So, council is talking about you know us being listed as an additional insured on their policy, uh, and I do believe that was done last year. So, okay, additional insured on their policy. All right, Miss um, Mitchell. So I understand they are responsible for the selling and everything, but if, if somebody like you, like Bob was saying, if somebody leaves there and have an accident, 
or if something happens on the ground where they're, where they're serving, would the town be legally obligated for anything that happens? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The, since the town owns the property, it already has liability insurance on the property uh, that will cover the town for any instances that occur on the on the property now when, when somebody's selling alcohol there that could leave and cause an accident and, and obviously the town um they're going to look to the town as a, an additional party to to name because the town does have um in the eyes of some people deep pockets um you know um the good thing going for the town is you do have the you are covered under the state uh Tort Claims Act, which caps the amount of money that can be recovered, but and that's why I was suggesting that the vendors need to have um, the town named as additional insured uh, that would indemnify the town if it does have to defend itself on a claim. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like double insurance if you want to go. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any, any other discussion? Yeah. Mr. King? The, the, um, the tort liability now is uh, 300000 uh, I believe they increased it to, they're trying to increase, I believe it was around five. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, yes. Ms. Hartley? Mr. My concern is that the park is known as a family area of important events, and with uh, suspending the, um, the ordinance for these specific dates, I would feel that we might be opening Pandora's box and that eventually people could come in or feel free to come into the park on any occasion with alcoholic beverages and when the general public is there just for an outing or just for a day of fun with their children, then the children and as well as the parent and the adults would be at risk for very sometimes strange behaviors. So my concern is that we look at the fact that we could change the projectiles and the atmosphere of the park by doing this because these are specific occasions but then there are those people who come frequently during the week on the weekends that would I would not want to find out that they felt that they were free and at liberty to just come in and bring their alcoholic beverages because I thought at one time there was a post that said no alcoholic beverages allowed so I understand you saying suspending the ordinance for these specifics but we need to realize that we could really open up Pandora's box and see other things occur. Thank you, ma'am. Any other discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hall? We've, we've discussed liabilities. What What is the positive impact of approving this? Is there a cost benefit to the uh, town for doing this? I don't see a cost benefit, no, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? Again, this is resolution to suspending section 9 2 8 of the town's code of warrants for summer concerts on three dates. Uh, District 1? Yes. 2? No. 3? District 3 votes no. 4? Votes no. 5? No. 6? Yes. 7? No. 8? Oh, sorry. I apologize. No. no. Okay. Thanks. 8. Anyway, but yes, um, motion fails. Item e, of new, of, uh, item e of new business is a redistricting presentation uh, discussion led by Councilman Hall. Um, redistrict was added as a discussion item at the end of our last meeting, um, June the 10th, uh, by, uh, with Councilman Hall making the suggestion that South Carolina Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Office has provided some preliminary paperwork, which will be presented by Councilman Hall. Um, I would, I would just uh, note for council that we are in a business meeting, um, so it's, it's different than a work session. So I would ask that Mr. Hall make his presentation, and then we request the floor as we do um, with our questions. Thank you. Uh, I will turn the floor over to Mr. Hall. The issue of redistricting is one of the 14th Amendment, which is uh, one man, one vote. Uh, Maybe I have my pronouns wrong here, but it's one individual, one vote. We are not, as a council, as a municipality under state or federal law, required to redistrict or even visit the redistricting issue. 
However, counties and the state uh, have already done so because they are mandated by law. It is recommended, particularly by the municipal association, that we do so. And redistricting is using the census to establish a equal population within each district so that each council member will be representing a equal percentage of the population. As I said before, we're not mandated to do so. However, in the presentation, and I am old school, I don't do uh, fancy um, projections and so forth, uh, the South Carolina Department of Revenue uh, recommends a deviation of, would like to have 5% and considers 10% to be a, the most that they would recommend that we accept, and that's a 10% difference in population between two districts. We have one example of a 41% difference in distribution, uh, and under their uh, presentation, um, we have as many, excuse me, And between uh, some of the districts will be donor districts, that is that they have excess uh, numbers of voters or population in their district. And those districts primarily are uh, districts, District 1, um, I'm, excuse me, donor districts would be District 2, which has 146 above the recommended number of 659. District 6, which is 106 above, and District 7 is 143 additional people below, above the average. The um, district that is most out of, uh, on the negative side is District um, 1, which is 127 less than the norm. And that's a 19% direction, one direction, 22% for District 2. So between one and two, you have a 40% variation. Again, it's, I would ask the council to go through the process, at least have uh, fiscal affairs, and Mr. Hendricks has been named the point person, and I'm not sure if any additional information has been received, but I'd like to, as soon as that is received, for this council to have a work session to address it and possibly put it on a future agenda. Uh, Mr. Hall, do I hear a motion? As far as um, instructions for the interim town manager? I move that the uh, in, uh, town man, interim town manager be the point person in contact with uh, fiscal affairs to expedite um, their initial map, which would give us a starting point to look at. Um, okay, I have a motion by Mr. Hall. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Hartley? Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Gain? Yeah, I, I think that, um, that uh, Councilman Hall is correct. I think that we probably did need to have some adjusting because um, you, you'd have um, one councilman representing you know, an enormous amount of, uh, of people and then another council person not um, quite there. So that's as much as Thank you, Mr. King. Any other discussion? District 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? District 3 votes yes. 4? Four? 4 yes. 5? No. 6? Yes. 8? Yes. And Mayor Lutz, yes, motion carries. And that brings us to item 10. Mr. Hendricks, the manager's report. You have the floor, sir. All right, good evening. Good evening. And uh, just a few updates to run through. Um, the concert in the park will still happen. We'll be alcohol free. Uh, that would be Saturday from 7 to 10, the Killer Bees are the, the act that will be there. 
Um, also coming up on uh, July 24th, it'll be National Night Out. Uh, the police department and the fire department are working on the schedule. We've got numerous other agencies that are slated to attend. Uh, that will be from 6 to 8 p.m., and that's at least the College Park. Um, you know, that, that's an opportunity to come out and learn more about the public safety side of things. Uh, you can do a good fire demonstration. Uh, I know that they've got uh, the shit Highway Patrol coming with uh, some cool things. So hopefully you can come all out and, and support your public safety. And, and uh, yes, sir. Is, is the mayor in the Duncan tank this year? I don't think we have a junk booth. If it's this hot, please put me in a dunk, <laughs> a dunk tank. I will do it you know, we're for have a couple of hours. So you call it down. Mr. Kane has a lot of money in his pocket to junk <laughs> We'll see how good it's fastball. Let's see if the shoulder lasts. <laughs> and as far as any upcoming holidays, we just had the 4th of July. Uh, the next town holiday is Labor Day, which is September the 2nd. Uh, that is also my birthday, so thank you for oh, that as a holiday. Birthday. Yeah, hit the big 5 0. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, the big project update uh, is the water project. Uh, it continues to move forward. We've now made three payments to DS Utilities. Approximately two million dollars that we've paid out. Just as a reminder, the invoices are submitted to our engineers who review and approve before they are submitted to Rural Infrastructure Authority. Uh, but then Rural Infrastructure Authority, once they have approval, will send us a direct deposit, and then we cut the check back to them. So we're not paying in advance. We're we're getting paid and then paid. Um, and just an update: the crews are currently working on Trotter Street, uh, right around Speaks Avenue. Uh, they'll be Hopefully getting to the end of Trotter Street, getting on North Lee Street next week. Uh, that will be our biggest traffic uh, issue. Um, we were hoping that they would be done before school starts back, but that might be a little optimistic at this point in time. Uh, as school starts back the week of uh, 31st, 30th. So, um, Ms. Andrews, yes, right. is that um, Caney Branch? Is that a part? I've seen some pipes down there. Uh, those are mills. Those are mills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are mill. So there was two crews. One turn. crew was working to town. Okay. That line will finish uh, right at, it will terminate right at about Starbucks on Highway 23 when okay. it uh, merges in with our system. Uh, the crew on the Zark Mill is going back up and they'll turn left on Old Columbia, cross over Windmill, Mitchell, that curve around Highway 1 and then that will go to the tank site at Old Field Road. Okay. Um, they're, they're making some progress. Uh, you know, they've gone probably a mile and a half now. Um, you know, I've heard that they're they're expecting to be done with our pipe, you know, towards the end of this year. Obviously, water won't be turned on until the whole project is complete, but uh, they're, they're, they're moving pretty good. Uh, obviously, the in-town portion is the most complicated as there's utilities I think so. in the brain. So, once they get out those the road, they should be fast. I think so. Thank you. Um, yeah, so they are on both our mill, right around the entrance of the SE Colton Pond. Uh, just a reminder for those of you that are attending the MASE annual meeting that is next week. Uh, and if you have questions about reimbursements uh, and per diem stuff, just let me know. Uh, just a quick run through uh, financial report of the budget update. General fund uh, ended the uh, the fiscal year, June 30th, with a balance of $932,764. Um, the LGIP for general fund was $1,111,504.22. We have since made a transfer to LGIP this past week, but that was in this current budget year. Um, utility checking has a balance of $282,185.99, with their LGIP account being $3,066,000. $641.90. Um, victims assistance, $18,271.32. The fire department's 1% account, $23,079.16. Police department donations, $13,072.54. Uh, capital improvement impact fee, $1,534,624.40. That was a, a inflated number with money going back into uh, into the LGIP account. We received the reimbursement from the State Revolving Fund. Uh, they reimbursed us seven hundred forty-two thousand eight hundred dollars for uh, engineering costs related to the, the water project. So that money was transferred into the 
uh, Belgium as well for investment. Uh, municipal court with a balance of $63,060.80. H-tax balance was $337,773. Boy, I didn't say that right. And then the LGIF for H-tax, $1,282,570.18. Uh, we also did a transfer of $200,000 from H-tax into the, the LGIF account as well. And maximize the investment Any questions about any of the report? Yes, Mr. Hart, copies of that will be available to council? Yes, I can email that out this evening. <coughs> when are we scheduled to hear from the auditor on fiscal year 22-23? I hope that that will be the August business. Mm -hmm. Do we, we, we have a firm confirmation? I do not. West Columbia's audit, uh, which is a much more complex, was finished in November. And, and we are way behind and there was some internal issues and my goal if I'm talking with Neil uh, is to have it for the August meeting. Could we have a work session before the meeting? If, if that's council's desire to have a work session regarding that. Uh, we will have a work session July 30th regarding water wastewater uh, to get everybody up to speed on this project so we I desire to have Neil come in that day to present some information. Well, my point on work session is the much more informal. Uh, we have rules uh, for council meetings which restrict the number of questions, uh, et cetera. So I think a work, informal work session before a vote and uh, later in formal session would be appropriate. Okay. Somebody else Certainly any, any other questions for Mr. Hendricks? Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have no executive uh, session this evening. Uh, potential agenda items for next month's meeting. Do I have any, um, have any motions for that? Then I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Kane? Are we doing the, uh, the outside to make a motion? Yeah, I have a motion. Yeah, I would like to place on the, uh, on the agenda for next month uh, outside um, appointments for the committees. Did, did we, Which, what I'm saying, I, I may want to get off of uh, comment. So, can we put that on the agenda so we can at least talk about that? Specifically, what uh, uh, the motion for out, which outside committee, Mr. Chairman? All of them, but um, mine in particular. <laughs> I don't want to limit anybody because, you know, I don't want to get to the meeting and then somebody else decide they don't want to be on. The committee today on either so all outside committees if that's okay with council please i have a motion do i have a second a second any discussion uh, i'll just say that this should be very specific this shouldn't be something that is uh, placed out there the committee appointments are for two years and unless someone resigns from their appointment um, we should be specific in, in addressing just those resignations any other comments? Mr. Mayor, is that uh, codified in our ordinance that uh, those appointments are for two years? Uh, it's understood it's not codified, sir. So we are dealing with it's, trends. It's understood that it's done um, in our election cycle. So the council, so if, when you have a, if you have a new council that comes on, uh, that council would then have an opportunity to uh, address those committees at that time. So the answer so this is was, that it is this was just in law. It was just addressed in November, so. Okay. Any other discussion? District one? Yes. Two? Yes. Three? District three goes yes. Four? Four, yes. Five? Yeah. Six? Yes. Uh, eight? Yes. And Mayor votes no. Uh, motion, motion carries. And any other motions for potential agenda items for next month's meeting? I don't have a, no, Mr. Kane? I don't have a, uh, another uh, item, but I, I do think that we need to, um, and, and we can maybe look at this in a uh, different setting, but um, I, I, would, I would really like to just restrict this to agenda items for next month's meeting, Mr. Okay. Kane. All right. Yeah. Please, thank you. I have, I have, um, I have something. Ms. Mitchell? I'm not sure. But Jay, I was supposed to get some information about the park. 
I never got any information. Well, since, well, you know, I was supposed to get some information about the park. Okay. So I if I don't get it. this information, I need to put back on the agenda. Are you talking about Woodard Park? Yes, I am. Okay, that was, I thought that was addressed in April or May. But it was, but I was supposed to get some updates on it, and I never got anything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if, if I don't receive something, I want it back on the agenda. Okay, we can, we can talk after and, and figure out what it is you want me. Any other motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Hall? The second. Second. Mr. Ms. Hartley, any discussion? District 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 3? Yes. 3 votes, yes. 4? 4, yes. 5? Yes. 6? Yes. 8? Yes. Any other votes, yes? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.